On this edition of Fulton at Work, whether it's upgrades, expansion, or new buildings, Fulton's future is a bright one for us all, thanks to a major investment in county facilities and libraries. I'm Daryl Carver. We'll take a look at some of these completed and some soon to be completed projects when Fulton at Work continues right after this. Please stay with us. Welcome to Fulton at Work, I'm Daryl Carver. One billion dollars can make anyone a little bit happier about their future. That's the amount of money being invested in the county's infrastructure facilities. Transportation, libraries, and water have all had or will have some type of upgrade or expansion in the year 2017. Joining us now to talk about all this is the Director of Real Estate Asset and Management, or DREAM for short, that's Ellis Kirby. First of all, Mr. Kirby, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Please tell us a little bit more about DREAM and its daily responsibilities for Fulton County facilities. DREAM is responsible for over 200 buildings throughout the county in maintaining, operating, constructing, renovating for all those sites along with grounds maintenance and also trash waste removal. We also handle real estate, lease transactions, and other items that go with uh, managing real estate. Now, when we talk about facilities and work on facilities, mm -hmm. I understand the building that we're coming from right now, the Government Center, yes. is one of those involved. If you've been here on a rainy day, you may see the, the yellow pads here and they're catching the raindrops. I know that's an issue that you're currently working on. Yes, those pads caught my eye the first time it rained when I started almost a year ago. And I asked my team where we were on designing the project to eliminate those leaks. Uh, over the past six months, we have been working with our designers, our project management team, and others to develop a bid to alleviate those issues. And we're ready to bid that project. It will be part of the urban redevelopment bond. And by the time we get the funds in June, the goal is to be able to release that project after the bid. And that is one of the top priorities that we have as part of the bond and part of the the upgrades in this building. Now when we talk about building upgrades, some of the other buildings that have or will benefit from yes. money for those building upgrades, if you can go into that just a little bit. Yes, between the funds that we'll talk about in a moment, we have plans to do upgrades for all major buildings and all buildings that provide ser services to the public throughout Fulton County. How are all these projects being funded? I know you had mentioned bond funding as one, right. one way that, they, that they're being paid for. Yes, we have really three avenues. We have 2016 capital that started the process of having the ability to do major infrastructure upgrades and upgrades for the county. We are working through a lot of those projects now that if you've been watching the board meeting and the approvals on the infrastructure and other projects that we're doing, you can see those. We also will be getting 7.5 million in capital for, for buildings outside the urban redevelopment bond. And additionally, the big number is the $78 million that we get, we'll get for the government center, the courts buildings, along with potentially the justice center and the medical examiners for the, for the bond that will address all the issues in those buildings when it comes to infrastructure major issues uh, from the Faithful and Gould report. Tell us about really the thought process in trying to prioritize all of these and get all this work done. Yes. Basically, I'm fortunate that Faithful and Gould provided priorities uh, needed in these buildings and we've worked from those. But in similar priority categories, beyond that, what we're looking at is how does, how does it solve safety issues? Uh, how does it uh, solve operational efficiency issues which ties to the comfort and the, and the comfort of our building occupants in those buildings and the visitors that come to our buildings? And lastly is image and appearance. You know, how do we improve the image and appearance of the buildings uh, that we serve? Again, going back to the yellow pads, eliminating uh, the water leaks so that those pads aren't down and our buildings are sealed and, and watertight for future use. Now, you talked earlier about the urban redevelopment mm -hmm. bond. What are some of the priority projects involved with that particular bond? Yes. First and foremost is, uh, is addressing the building envelope, uh, finishing the roofing projects that we've already been working on in the, on those buildings, the exterior work, which the atrium repair is one, the exterior stone work, 
and, and repairing the exterior stone on the court building is another. So roofs and exterior work to, to seal the buildings tight is number one. Number two is really building and occupancy comfort, which ties to new and upgraded air conditioning and heating systems, which is badly needing, needed in the two buildings here on the main campus, which is the government center and the courts complex. Beyond that is addressing other infrastructure issues such as a fire, systems, access control systems, and lastly, addressing you know, the major image of the building when it comes to the main areas, uh, bringing restrooms up to code, and other projects that tie to image improvement. Now, I understand senior centers are getting upgrades thanks to, what, $7.5 million in capital funding. Yes. Talk about those improvements. Yes. The senior centers, that list of 7.5 million is, is more than senior centers. We do have health service buildings and also the North and South Annex involved in, those, those, uh, in, the, in the funds provided for, for the buildings. But the senior centers are the majority when it comes to the volume of people that have come through those buildings. Uh, same thing as the government center and the urban redevelopment bond. Roofs, uh, mechanical systems, uh, finish areas and restrooms, along with, which we don't have here on the main site per se, is parking areas and, and developing uh, plans to improve the parking areas and the landscaping for those areas for an overall improved appearance. When you think about this huge undertaking, and it is a huge undertaking, what goes through your mind as far as what you want the end product to look like and feel like for residents of Fulton County? Well, it goes back to how we enhance what Faithful and Gould did on the prior priorities. I want, I want visitors to see the image of Fulton County when it comes to an improved image, a professional image. I want them to feel safe and comfortable when they come to the buildings. And I also want the systems that, that, are, that we provide in the buildings to provide comfort, to, to provide lighting, that they feel an environment that's inducive of a collaboration and working with the communities and working with our employees and citizens. This is awesome information. When we come back, we're going to shift the focus to library renovations and now how those libraries are also going green. So please stay with us. Welcome back to Full Network. I'm Daryl Carver. The Atlanta Fulton County Library System has undergone various changes since it began in 1902. Now a new chapter has begun as a result of a $109 million investment. We'd like to welcome back Dream Director Ellis Kirby to talk about that and a little bit more. Uh, first of all, remind our viewers about that library bond referendum that the voters approved back in 2008 and the projects that immediately resulted from it, which were the Phase I construction. Yes, I understand back in 2008 that 65 percent of the voters approved overwhelmingly to, for a $275 million bond for two phases of construction for libraries. The first phase, which I started last year and we were finishing um, from a library standpoint, was the construction of eight new libraries and the renovation of two libraries. And when you look at what Dr. Morley and the staff and Al Collins, who works for me in managing those construction projects, I see it as a smashing success from Wolf Creek to Alpharetta to Milton to Metropolitan to Southeast to Wolf Creek and South Fulton. The libraries are beautiful and they provide great services to our citizens, our kids and our communities throughout Fulton County. And people have seen that great work that was done with all those new facilities and now we're already talking about phase two. Talk about those 22 libraries that are supposed to be renovated under that plan. Yes. The 22 libraries really are grouped into five construction groups along with Central. Group one, which is the first seven libraries, the bid is complete and next week we will start planning with the contractor for the design and con construction essentially the renovation of those libraries. Group two, which consists of five libraries, the bid is on the street. Then groups three, four, and five are coming very soon. By the end of the second quarter, we ha will have bid all 21 renovations uh, of the major libraries throughout the county that need renovated. Central is a separate uh, construction project. We are now in the middle of bidding for bridging design, which we will take the rest of this year working with, work, working with the design team, working with the library staff and others 
to develop a comprehensive plan of design by the end of the year that we can bid out. Construction should start next year for the, the Central Library and that project is going to make a great impact when it comes to the image of our Central Library downtown. Ultimately, what do you hope um, is the goal to get phase two complete? What sort of time frame are the we The time frame? To? The current timeline pushes us to the first quarter of 2020. By the end of 2019, the majority of li libraries should be renovated and back up and running. Uh, the schedule includes Central maybe pushing into 2020, so that is the current timeline. What about maintaining those libraries when the renovations are completed? Yes, that's a great question. And that comes back onto a dream. This year, we will be bidding and adding a new computerized man management system throughout the county, not only for the libraries, but for all buildings. That system will allow us, both for the libraries and other buildings, to take you know, manufacturers' recommendations, our experience, and put that equipment into our system th so that we have a strong preventive maintenance program that ties to expanding and maintaining and expanding the life of the equipment in all buildings, including the libraries. Now, I know one of the considerations is taken into account with all of this is green building design and sustainability. Tell us about how that manifests itself and what we're seeing with the renovated Atlanta Fulton County Library System. That's a great question. Fortunately, during the phase one, the library decided to make LEED certification a goal for all new libraries. That certification drives both equipment, operations, and also design of the facility to be green and sustainable. When you look at the air conditioning systems, the lighting, the site work for all those libraries, they meet those LEED standards. As a matter of fact, when it comes to the Phase One libraries, all libraries achieved LEED certification and East Roswell achieved LEED Gold. We will have the same goals in the renovation depending on the scope of the renovations of the libraries and specifically Central Library, we have a target of LEED Gold with a stretch goal of potentially lead platinum since it will be a cornerstone facility for us and it's in the center of downtown Atlanta. Now as if your team wasn't busy enough, I know there's work that's that's currently beginning on Tim Park Place right. as well as the ta as well as the completed work on the tax commissioner's office in, in Alpharetta. Tell us about those projects and just what went into them and and where where you see all this heading. Yes, I'll talk about the tax commissioner first because it was just completed. Our team working with Dr. Ferdinand, R Rodney Floyd and the tax commissioner team worked hard to build and design and build a new space that would accommodate their operation that was currently in a lease space at Royal Drive. I'll also mention that Public Works, David Clark's team, uh, allowing us to expand into that space and provide services uh, in our facility and in a brand new facility that we renovated is a smashing success. We had an open house and a kickoff last month and it was well received by the county commissioners and the citizens of North Fulton and those that it will serve. And as far as Ten Park Place? Excuse me, and for Ten Park Place, uh, thank you Daryl, uh, we are currently in the middle of construction of Ten Park Place and as a reminder that facility is going to take a pl the place of our Aldridge facility which is next to Grady and being sold to Grady. Um, Dennis King, who I replaced, is the lead, is the lead project manager and he's doing an awesome job of pulling together our team, the health services team, and IT and others, all the, all the people when it comes to building and starting a new facility. That facility is two and a half floors. I believe it's over 44,000 square feet. It was basically a gut and rebuild to build a modern clinic that will rival any of your doctor's offices and provide critical services needed for the citizens of our county. Now this is a lot of work going on. How can people contact you if they have any additional questions? That's great. If you have specific questions about the projects, you're welcome to email or call me and I look forward to answering your questions. We have been meeting with certain departments to go out and present the plans that are specific to them and to the county. I welcome that and so please email or call me. Be patient. We have a lot of projects going on so I'll definitely get back with you and schedule. And I'll also remind you when it comes to work orders, we have a work order process for each department and throughout the county. So please follow those, that process when it comes to reporting work orders. And if there are emergencies, we do have an emergency line that we publish through Full Call News. And please use that line if there's an emergency. We have people on the phones that can dispatch people to fix your issues immediately. Also, is there an email address that people can reach you? 
ellis.kirby at fultoncountyga.gov. With that, Ellis Kirby from the Department of Real Estate Asset Management, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. We'll be back to wrap up the show after this short break. Now, before we go, we want to let you know that keeping up with all the county's infrastructure projects has never been easier. All you have to do is sign up for the county's monthly newsletter by calling 404-612-8300 or through email fulton.communication at fultoncountyga.gov. That's all of our time. Thanks for joining us and thanks to our guest today. Now, we want to connect with you online. Please check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm Daryl Carver, and we'll see you next time.